want to try to rope in. I have several people who are on the broadcast with me. Sumit Peer is with us. General Sivach is with us. I think Major Shah is with us, and Ambassador Vora is also with us. Uh, now, uh, Major Shah, you know what the crime was is still well well established. Now these people videographed it themselves. Now the point comes is that there were plenty of red flags available of a radical mindset. I've been told that they went to a workshop in this engineering factory. They actually made the SWAT themselves. They asked for a license plate from the RTO uh, with the number plate 2611, which was granted to them. They were using the number plate and they were using this bike. It was literally almost a jihad factory they were running for a long period of time. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Go uh, ahead. Rishabh. Most, most certainly. This was a very, very highly organized, properly planned, not just a murder, not just a crime, but a, not a worse kind of terrorism. And finally, sir, Islam is increasingly conflated with terrorism. People say, you know, forgive me, I have this outstanding son of India, Major Muhammad Ali Shah, on the show. Forgive me, Major Saab, but I have heard, I have heard people in the West say, Are terrorism Muslim? Why? This is time for introspection. Forgive me for saying this, Major Sir, but I'm only reporting what I've heard. Uh, Major Shah, same, same couple of questions to you. Uh, you have the murder weapon. You have uh, the, the beheading self-recorded on camera. You have a self-recorded confession. You have the CCTV visuals. You, have, you will have the eyewitnesses. You have the family members. There's a case history. There's a clear motive uh, in any law court, uh, which is what we have, a system of laws. Uh, that is uh, pretty much open and shut now. So, uh, how do we now expedite this prosecution? Right, Rishabha, before answering you, let me uh, tell you what Ambassador Deepak Mora has said. And he hasn't said anything wrong, and I totally agree with him. And, and uh, I'm on the same page with him, yes. Uh, he has only stated the facts, and he was very, very gracious enough to have uh, offered the apology to me. No, sir, you are right, actually. Because I feel embarrassed today because of some radicals, of some uh, hardcore uh, terrorists, our community takes a beating. And that is people like me, sir, right? Thinking Muslim like me has to bear the brunt and has to suffer in that, sir. So I totally agree with you. You go anywhere, people will say it is the Muslims who are creating havoc around the world and such things. And we have to hear that. And we have to hear that for people who we do not support at all who we are, we ridicule, who we are totally against. So it is uh, there's something, as General Sivaj and Sumit Peter also rightly has brought out, uh, along with the Ambassador Bora, that, you know, they are exemplary punishment to aid. It is an organized, it was a, not just, I will not call it a crime. It was a heinous mm -hmm. act of terrorism. Again, I think Major Shah wants to make a point. Major Shah, go ahead, then I have another question. Rishabh, firstly, I have to thank you for doing this discussion. And secondly, you know what Ambassador Deepak Gura said, just presenting that further. It's very easy for, you know, we have to understand first where the problem lies. Now, it's very easy for me to jump in and start debating with a person that, no, 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 you are wrong, Muslims are not like that. Even you know, even I know Muslims are not like that. Okay, fine. You know, radicalized segments, that radicalized happen, radicalization happens on both sides. Now, when we have to understand that there is an issue, there is a problem, only then can we actually come forward and solve that issue. But why have we struggled? I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm staying away from the politics, Major Shah, but we have struggled. There was a huge political machinery that was put into play for no good reason that wanted to create an alternative called saffron terror, just to, just to balance some kind of dialogue for, for reasons best known to... I am assuming Mr. Chidamram and others who were commenting on this. Uh, so why, why are we still finding it difficult to say that, look, we have two people who have obviously been radicalized. They come from, and the radicalization happens from Islamic countries. And we have to be able to, to deal with it. We have to deal with the problem head on that this problem exists. These people are laughing and joking and videographing it. And they've been, they've been, they've been I mean, this RTO number plate wasn't given yesterday. So clearly they were celebrating 2611. Just like, you know, when, you know, people get upset that when Pakistan wins a match, you in the media, because you're all bhaks and godis, uh, worry about people blowing firecrackers. Uh, it could have been them. Now, should we not have these concerns? Exactly, Rishabh. That's the whole point I'm trying to make, that, you know, when we know that there is a problem at hand, it has to be resolved. 
instead of debating about and rebuking and you know and review and re re rebutting, it's very easy to sit back and defend and and debate. That no, no, no. The, you need a, all you need is a good speaker, good debater who will come forward with ten points. But when we actually, like, if I'm a, if I'm a patient, I have to go to a doctor. When doctor Abhay Nawazni pakrega, he will not know the bimari. He is treating okay. me for this, but I got malaria. So, jab tak bimari nahi pakre jayegi, to how? But Major Shah, about two weeks ago, all right, today is Friday. About two weeks ago, a concerted, motivated. Coordinated attempt was made after afternoon prayers on Friday to create havoc in several cities in this country. It wasn't millions of people, it wasn't thousands of people, it was 20-30 people in every spot, right? Now, today is Friday, there are no protests, okay? And if you are in the Hindu community in this country, what, what are you being told? You are being told that otherwise on Friday, rioting and stone pelting can take place and all sorts of actions can happen, okay, just because people can come out of a mosque and do what, what they want. And the fact that there has been absolutely nothing that's happened in the past four days, people have responded very calmly to this, okay. Uh, there has been high security, but, but there has been no stray incident also. Nobody's been killed, there's been no police firing required, no lati charge required. Uh, what does that actually tell us when people are are saying that this is imminent prelude to some Muslim genocide. Where is it? Right, Rishab, you know, I will answer this in a very simple way in 30 seconds. You know, only if I believe in a ghost will I actually see a ghost. Now there are people who do river bombing, mongering, fear mongering, and they say that, like you asked me yesterday, are we on a cusp of a genocide? Are Muslims in India on a cusp of a genocide? I said, no, they're not. So when people believe in that, and they indulge in self-censorship. Like a lot of Muslims would not come forward to join the defense forces or the IPS or the IAS or sit for the IIT or IIM. So that is when people believe they are being victimized and when they, that is when they start taking a victim card and they generally believe they are being victimized. Now the solution to that is please do not, yesterday you, conducted, you had a beautiful program on your channel where you said, okay, these are the same Muslim voices which Muslims in India should actually believe in and not bunkum and not river bombing okay. and not fear bombing. Okay. That okay, you're like cast over genocide, this is going to happen, nothing bad is going to happen to Muslims. You know, all our thoughts will come okay. through eventually. But